he suggests letting your bad habit atrophy. And I'd never heard of that before. And I immediately got a, a visual. Of my Hi, I'm Sydney Shoemaker, and I help people struggling with grief unpack and manage all their emotions with ease and grace. How often do you feel stuck? Maybe you feel stuck right now, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. Doesn't matter if you're dealing with grief or loss or anything else in your life. You just may have hit a rough spot. So what can you do to pull yourself out of the deep rut? I've worked with clients before in the past that have said to me, I just, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to pull myself out. So think of a car spinning its tires in the mud only to dig deeper, feeling frustrated and defeated. And this happens quite frequently with a lot of people that just don't know how to get themselves, get themselves pulled out. And sometimes we need help pulling ourselves out of that mud, don't we? And sometimes we can do it on our own. But either way, there's hope that you can free yourself. You're not stuck forever. And I was listening to Tom Bilyeu's recent podcast on becoming better, like a better version of yourself. And I love Tom's YouTube channel. If you've never checked it out, please do. His videos are quite lengthy, but well worth the time investment if you love to work on yourself, if you like self-improvement. So Tom had stressed that one major key to, to making life changes is to not allow yourself to get sucked into bad habits. And we, we all have them. And if we're not aware of them, they can hijack our personal progress on, on any level and whatever we're trying to achieve. And at the end of the day, if you're feeling stuck, bad habits could be impeding your progress. He suggests letting your bad habit atrophy. And I'd never heard of that before. And I immediately got a, a visual of muscles wasting away if they're not used. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. You've heard that saying before, right? Apply that same concept to whatever bad habit you wanna change. And you start this process by putting something new into your mind by using a pattern interrupt. And you've heard me mentioned pattern interrupts before when it comes to changing your thoughts and you do this by having self-awareness and zero tolerance for your behavior so for example let's say you find yourself snacking at the same time every day out of habit and you know it's not healthy as soon as you reach for that food you insert a pattern interrupt by saying i don't do this anymore even if that food is in your mouth, have zero tolerance, spit it out, brush your teeth, whatever it takes. You can apply this concept to the bad habit of thinking thoughts that take you down an emotional rabbit hole. That is exactly what I had to do to myself. I shut it down immediately. I took ownership of my thoughts and actions because I wanted to change and I wanted it bad enough that I had to make some drastic changes in my behavior. The easy part about this is is that pattern interrupt but now you have to create a new habit to do this you have to identify something you want something that is so strong you're willing to make that change and for me wanting to feel calmer more in control more peaceful was a strong enough desire to eliminate those intrusive thoughts feeling calmer would keep my stomach from hurting and keep me out of the doctor's office or possibly even the hospital it kept me off medication and I was able to be present for my family without feeling anxious all the time, without being um, hijacked, having my thoughts hijacked throughout the day. And that was a very powerful desire for me. So the bottom line is if your desire isn't big enough, you, you won't have the energy to break your bad habit. You have to get so excited, so focused on this new thing that the bad habit falls away. And as Tom says, the bad habit becomes the enemy of what you want. He says you can't pick BS. You have to pick something that you actually care about. And it has to be something that gives you more energy than it drains from you. That thing that lights up your soul, the thing that makes your heart sing. This new thing is tied to desire, the desire to want to make your life better and the desire to make someone else's life better. Could be your partner, could be your family, could be people at work. And for me, I knew if I could break this bad habit, 
of replaying these troublesome thoughts, I could not only make my life better, but then I always had in the back of my mind that I could share my own journey and the things that I've learned along the way with all of you. That lit up my soul. That made my heart sing. I wanted to be able to give hope to anyone who was willing to listen and learn from my story, learn from my journey. It was about connection. It was about service. And it was an opportunity to give hope where sometimes people don't feel that there is any hope. They feel like their situation is hopeless. They feel lost. They feel broken. They wonder what's wrong with them. And there's nothing wrong with anybody. You just have to change your way of thinking. So the desire swelled up inside of me and having zero tolerance for those troublesome thoughts became very, very strong. The desire to help others gave me the energy to develop new habits. I surrounded myself with books that uplifted me and with people who didn't drain my energy. And I repeated that new desire over and over long enough that it became my new habit. Now, old habits are easy to continue. You don't have to think about them. You go grab that bag of potato chips and shove your hand into them, or you lay on the couch and watch TV instead of getting up and, and exercising. Those are effortless. Making a change is hard, but you can do hard things if your why is big enough. And you have to, you have to push through the pain. You have to be disciplined. And the question Tom asked is, what gives you enough energy to get you into that loop of desire to figure out how it connects you to other people, how it allows you to serve others? You could also say this is having a purpose and waking up every day with a purpose is very motivational. If you don't have a purpose, what are you going to do with your day? You have to push yourself to become better because you are 100% responsible for your life. Nobody is going to save you. You have to save yourself. So learn to master your emotions so they don't master you because what is at stake if you don't? All right, everyone, go make it a great day. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.